Hi, I'm Oliver Lundy. I'm an automotive photographer in the UK. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you know when you're ready to start charging and how much to charge for your work. Now, this is a very difficult subject and it's, um, it's going to change depending on the situation. Now, it's one of the questions I get asked a lot is, how do you know when you're good enough to start charging for your work? How much should you charge for your work? And should you do free work or should you just say, no, I charge for my work and this is how much it is? And there's a really simple gauge for it, which is when people are willing to pay you for it. Um, there's a really nice thing that happens where once you've got a big enough portfolio, and the quality of your work has got to a certain level, people will just assume that you do charge because they assume that you're a professional. And at that point, you can then have a default position of, I charge for my work and here are my rates. I'll go into what they should be in a minute. Um, but to, at that point, you, you, when people assume that you do charge, it's because they assume that you're a professional and are worth paying for There'll always be some people who are shocked that you expect money for work um, and they just want everything for free or they want it for exposure. And, uh, you know, I've it's, it's, it's a difficult thing because you don't want to just turn around and be arsy with them. You don't want to turn around and say, oh, well, when my mortgage company accepts exposure, I'll happily do the shoot for exposure. Um, but it, it can be difficult, especially when, you know, you're, you're trying to make it either as a part-time living or as a full-time living and people don't value what you do um, as much as you do and that's fine like there's always going to be people who want everything and don't want to pay very much for it they're the worst type of clients and generally speaking it's not worth it to to, to do those kind of shoots for very little money because they'll expect everything and they're not going to be the ones that recommend you and even if they do they're going to recommend you to their friend and be like oh this guy was great and he charged me nothing so you there is a balance between knowing your own value setting a, a minimum that you won't go below and also the other end of that is is saying no to a really cool project because the money isn't is, is what isn't what you wanted um is, is the other side of that so you need to decide where you are on that and it will depend whether you're at the very beginning of your journey and you're actually um you know you're happy to take any kind of work because you just want to build your portfolio versus you're really busy you just don't have the time and you are only willing to exchange your time for a fixed amount of money or above. So that's that's how you know. And, and the transition could be long. It could be years. It was for me um, and still is for me in that sometimes I still do these free shoots. Um, but equally, I might charge someone as much as a thousand pounds for a photo shoot, um, depending on what they want. If it's an all day shoot, if they want, you know, photos and video or, or it's a particularly challenging thing that i know is going to take a lot of editing time as well so you know th th there there's a big range and it all depends on the situation i still occasionally do free work myself if it's a particularly nice car if i really like the person and they're a friend of mine um or if it's a project that's going to lead to something else so it might be a collab with another creator. It might be someone who has a particularly large following and therefore um, I'm likely to get more business by doing a shoot with them. Or um, I might do a free giveaway. So I occasionally will run uh, a photo shoot giveaway. Uh, and the reason for that is again, to expand and try and get a bigger reach to people that I might not have otherwise uh, been in touch with and therefore um, get more business. And I, I probably have got more business from doing free shoots and then getting follow-on business that I have from any other method that I use in terms of advertising. So doing free shoots has value. Yes, you have to put the time and effort in, but you quite often will get something from it down the line that you weren't necessarily uh, expecting. And also, if you're still in the beginning phases where um, it's still a hobby to you and you haven't quite you know, gone professional yet, um, you might have charged some people and some people might have approached you and asked how much you charge, um, but you're still in that kind of middle zone, then it's still good to do free stuff because it all builds your portfolio, builds your experience and it ultimately builds your skill set. There's two big 
concepts here. One is, if this is a hobby for you and any amount of money would be great because you'd love to do the photo shoot anyway and you're still in the phase where you're building your portfolio and then so getting 50 quid would be amazing because that's 50 quid that you wouldn't have had before and you would love to do the shoot anyway. So charge 50 quid. Don't start at saying I'll do it for 50 quid. But if you want to do it for 50 quid and they say all I've got is 50 quid then do it. If they say, oh, I've got a mate who did it for me the other day and or the other week and he only charged me 50 quid, so you know, can you do it for that? You can say yes. Or you can say, well, my normal rate would be whatever it is, let's say 250 pounds. Um, so how about we meet somewhere in the middle? Um, or is there any way that you can get closer to that? Normally there is um, like, you know, the, the in the UK at least, I, I sort of r roughly know that the best photographers, uh, the best automotive photographers will be charging um, for the for the average person. So for kind of a typical photo shoot, you're going to be looking at somewhere between the region of three to five hundred pounds. That's what the kind of the, the top guys are charging for a kind of typical two to three hour photo shoot. Um, so aiming more than that, you're going to struggle. Um, and very few people are going to accept a rate like that. Now, commercial photography for companies might be very different because their expectations are going to be different. It might be an entire weekend and therefore you could charge, say, £2,000. But that might be because you're going to be bringing all the equipment and you might have, um, you know, you might be one of a very few select people who they trust to actually deliver a level that's good enough for their needs. Um, but at the, at the other end, at the bottom end, if you're just starting out, you've only got basic equipment and you don't have a huge portfolio of really, really strong work, then it's going to be difficult to charge hundreds of pounds for a photo shoot because people aren't going to have the confidence that they're going to get value from their for, for the money if you don't if you can't back it up if they if they didn't come to you if you, particularly oh this is a very important point how much you can charge if someone comes to you versus you going to someone else. So it's a bit rich if you reach out to someone and go, oh, I love your car, it's really cool. I'd love to shoot it sometime. And they go, yeah, that'd be brilliant. And you go, brilliant, that'd be 2,000 pounds or you know, 200 pounds even. And they go, oh, well, hang on a minute, you you came to me, like, come on. you know. And some people might be, yeah, of course. I mean, you're an artist, you deserve to get paid. And that's great. When you find people like that, hold on to them, they're brilliant. But they're the exception, not the rule. So if you're going to approach someone about shooting their car, generally speaking, you're going to have to do it as a freebie. I want to shoot your car for my portfolio for free. Sometimes if you over deliver, they'll want to give you something in exchange. There's a law of reciprocity. You give someone something of value, they want to give you something back. Sometimes it'll be money. Sometimes it'll be a beer. Uh, you know, they might take you for a meal afterwards. They might, um, they might say, oh, I'm going to recommend you to all of my friends because this has been really, really good. And I'll tell them that you charge X amount normally. All of these things have happened to me. Um, and it's really good when it happens. And actually building a strong relationship with the person can be as valuable as the money that they might have given you. So if you can be personable, if you can be friendly, if you can relate to them and uh, spend some time getting to know them whilst you're on your photo shoot, they're going to be that much more likely to enjoy the session as well as be happy with the results of the session and therefore that much more likely to recommend you to friends and family and all the rest of it. So you need to be a little bit more careful about um, asking for money if you approach someone. Whereas if they approach you and say, I really love your work, I've seen you on Instagram, on your website, whatever it is, and I've got this car and I'd love to have you shoot it, then it's a perfect opportunity for you to say, yeah, sounds like a great project, would love to shoot that car. Here's my availability and here are my rates. And you can start off reasonably high here. Now there's a rule, and this is to do with the sort of psychology of sales, which is, it's called positive priming. And it's the idea of if I say to you, my photo shoots are a hundred pounds, whether or not that's a lot of money to you is irrelevant for this, because you are then going to put into that scenario whatever you think a hundred pounds of value is. So if you're a millionaire and you've got a whole bunch of hypercars and someone says, I do your photo shoot for a hundred pounds, they're going to go, oh, that's cheap. Whereas if you're 17 years old and you've only just got your first car and you earn seven pound an hour and you, it, it, you know, your part-time job, 
100 pounds sounds like a lot of money. Whereas if I said my usual rate is 500 pounds a session, um, uh, but I do entry, you know, I, I have a basic package which starts at 250 pounds. Then all of a sudden 250 pounds sounds like a bargain compared to 500 pounds, which is my usual rate. Um, and yet before that person might have thought that 100 pounds was expensive. Now they're thinking that 250 pounds is cheap because it's the cheapest that you offer. Now, sometimes you're just gonna be way off and people are gonna be like, I can't afford that. I'm not paying that kind of thing for a photo shoot on your bike, whatever, fine. You know, and that's fine. You just gotta accept that some people are not gonna be willing to pay for photography at that rate. Other people are going to think that's cheap and you ideally want people at that end who are gonna not only value what you do, but be able to pay it and be willing to pay it and be happy with the results when you do and keep on coming back to you. That's how you know you've got the sweet spot. It's when they you're earning money from them and they value what they what you're doing and they're coming back to you and they're recommending other people. If anything, it means that you could have potentially gone a little bit higher and they still would have valued it and recommended you and everything else. So whereas if they get the results back and you don't get lots of, you know, lovely messages saying how much they love it and they don't recommend you, then maybe you charge too much and they didn't think it was good enough or they didn't value it as much. And therefore you might want to think about coming down in price until you get to that sweet spot where people are happy with the results and recommending you to other people. Now, the negative priming obviously works the other way. So if you say, oh, my, my entry level package is 50 quid, um, but I do a full package, which is, you know, more photos and a longer photo shoot and it's like 200 quid you're gonna go well hang on a minute you know maybe i'll just maybe i'll stick with the basic package because you've already primed them at a lower number which is 50 quid so if you are going to give a range always start with the higher number first and end on the lower number so you could say my photo shoots range from 250 quid to five to 50 quid depending on how long you want to do and how many photos you want so there's, there's a whole bunch of other information about how to charge for your work but ultimately you have to balance getting a job and it paying you money versus um, how much you want to do the shoot versus how much those images that you're going to create would actually be valuable to you and whether or not you can use them. The reality of this is that customers and clients range massively and some of them are awkward and difficult and they want everything and won't pay you very much. And other times they're going to be amazing and they're going to be bowled over by the images that you create and can't believe that you charge so little. So you just have to be prepared for the fact that how someone else values your work isn't necessarily any kind of accurate reflection of how good it actually is, how much you should charge the next person, because everybody is different. Everybody values things differently and everybody has a different amount of money and is willing to spend it on different things. So don't feel bad if someone says, no, I'm not willing to pay that much money or you're not worth that much money. Don't feel bad if someone, um, you know, ask you to do something for free and you, and you turn around and say, well, you know, here are my rates. And then they say, okay, don't worry about it. That's fine. You're not looking to turn every single potential customer or every lead into a customer. You're looking to find the right ones. And if anything, I personally would much rather do a free photo shoot with someone who's nice and with a cool car than I would getting paid twice my normal rate and the guy's a complete douchebag and he wants the earth and he's a complete dick about it afterwards and doesn't recommend me to anyone. Not that that's ever happened, but you get the idea. So it's a, it is a very difficult concept how to charge or how much to charge, when to start charging uh, and the, the best thing that you can do is always try to over deliver. So always try to do a slightly better job than you think is uh, reasonable for that price. And then that way everyone will always be happy with what they've got and how much they paid and therefore that much more likely to recommend you and to want to get you to photograph their car again and or when they trade up to their next car. So building up a clientele of people who come to you when they get their new cars is always good because you get repeat business. And just bear in mind that it's a very difficult thing when you're talking about money. So don't worry if 
your if if your expectations aren't met or, or you get rejections or things like that it's just it's all part of the process you'll slowly build up how much you can charge over time and uh, eventually you'll get to a point where you're happy and if you're really lucky and you work really hard and you do really well you'll get to the point where so many people want to have shoots with you that you just start telling people well this is how much i charge and this is how long my waiting list is and therefore if they want to get on your waiting list they'll pay what you ask um obviously the the, the greatest photographers um work that way you know they only have so much time and um you know people want to shoot with them so much that they are you know they can effectively charge almost what they want um because they've got so many people coming to them for photo shoots um, i haven't got to that stage yet um i am lucky in a way in that I've, I've managed to get to a position where i can charge a fair amount of money for uh photo shoots with me and um, and that's partly because i've been doing it for quite a while and uh, i've built up quite a network of people and therefore um, you know, the, the number of people who see my work is much larger and therefore I have more people coming to me so I can be a little bit more um, or I can I can charge a little bit more than maybe someone who was just starting out even if they had the same level of work just because I've built up a bigger network um, and so all of these factors will, will play a role in whether or not you um, or how much you can charge and when you can start charging I hope that that makes sense um, to you and I hope it's been valuable to you if you do have any questions about this concept then do uh, drop me a comment i will try and answer all of them and it, if it has been useful to you then do drop me a like and subscribe for more on this series thanks and i'll see you next time